Thanks, Lynn. So hello, my name is Thomas Healy, and I'm the founder and CEO of Hylion. And the last time that Lynn and I were actually together, uh, we were over at the World Economic Forum in Davos. And pretty crazy forum, right? A lot of discussions around the war, a lot of discussions around are we in a recession? Are we going into a recession? But obviously, there are a lot of discussions around ESG, climate change as well, uh, and where we're heading. And one of the biggest takeaways that I had from that dialogue was everyone got up on stage and they talked about how by 2035, by 2040, they have a publicly stated plan that they're going to get to net zero emissions. But then when you actually talk to people in the hallways and at lunches and off the stage, everyone's saying, we don't know how we're going to do it. And frankly, we don't think we're going to be able to do it. And we're already starting to have discussions internally about how we might need to push that date out. And we don't even know when we need to push that date out too, because there's a ton of uncertainty. So through today's dialogue, uh, you know, one of the things I'm going to touch on is this is going to be a, a transition period. This isn't going to happen overnight. It's going to take time. Uh, and it's going to take an evolution of different solutions and different products to ultimately get us to that goal of net zero. Uh, a little bit of background on Hylion. So, we focus on electrifying the commercial vehicle space. So those big semi-trucks you see going down the highway, conventionally over the past however many decades, they've always been run off of diesel fuel. And we're now just getting into this phase where we're starting the shift into electrification. And that's our focus. We produce the powertrains behind electric vehicles. I also want to start off with saying that this is by far one of the toughest industries to electrify. And I'll start with some stories. So, First, there's a fleet up in uh, Toronto that said, hey, we're going to adopt five electric semi-trucks. And they went to the, the truck maker. They got their spec sheet of how many kilowatt hours are needed in order to power these vehicles. They brought that spec sheet to the utility provider. And the fleet manager said the utility provider literally just laughed at them and said, there's no way that you're going to get this much power. The grid just doesn't have it. So then that fleet went back to the truck maker and said, hey, you know, what do you want to do about this? There's not enough power on the grid. So they devised a plan where the fleet was going to build a warehouse. The truck maker was going to fill that warehouse full of batteries. And then when the trucks came back in, they were actually going to get recharged off of the warehouse, not off of the grid. And then the only problem with that solution was that they could only operate the trucks four out of the seven days of the week because the other three days, that warehouse needed to catch back up and get recharged. So think about that. That's for five semi-trucks. To share a little bit more about Hylion, so what we do is we actually build range extender electric semi-trucks. So if you think about the trucking market, we strongly believe it's going to break into two different buckets. You're going to have short haul, final mile, local delivery vehicles. Those will use BEV plug-in. They'll get to recharge overnight when they're sitting dormant. And then you're going to have the long haul sector, those that are truck that are going to be traveling hundreds of miles a day that don't have the opportunity to sit dormant for 10 hours to recharge. And those are the ones where you really need range extender electric semi-trucks. So what a range extender semi-truck is, is it's basically an electric vehicle. But as opposed to using the plug to recharge off the grid, you now actually bring a power plant or a generator on board the vehicle, and you charge the battery as you're driving. Let's talk about the different solutions, right? So you have, you could have a hydrogen fuel cell truck, you could have a natural gas range extender, you could have a plug-in electric truck. Well, let's talk about what do fleets actually care about? And it's really three things. So they care about what's the cost, what's the emissions, and what's the infrastructure. It's all about what's the ROI of this vehicle? What's gonna offer me the best payback? And so that, from that standpoint, that's why trucking, you know, when you go pitch them on buying an electric vehicle, the first thing they do is they ask, well, what's the vehicle going to cost? What's the fuel going to cost? And what's going to be the cost of that infrastructure that I need to set up in order to run this vehicle? And then they run the calculation and they say, hey, if I keep the vehicle for four years, five years, seven years, well, what's the actual payback of this truck going to be? And if you can come in with a solution that's less than diesel, then you've got their attention. If you come in with a solution that's more than diesel, now you're pitching to the fleet that they need to either charge the customer more or they're going to take a hit on how much profitability they have by operating their vehicle. So with all that being said, the problem that fleets are running into is when they're looking at these different electric solutions, most of them are coming in more expensive than diesel. 
So let's break down cost. Cost of hydrogen is about $10 a kilogram or $10 a gallon to refuel a truck. Cost of electric grid, about $5. Cost of renewable natural gas is about $1. Cost of diesel is around $5 as well. So right there, grid electricity and diesel are the same. Nat gas, significantly less than, uh, than diesel. Hydrogen, significantly more. So then let's look at infrastructure. So in the US, there are three refueling stations for hydrogen semi-trucks, all of them in California, all of them in the LA area. For grid electricity, there are four recharging stations for semi-trucks. And then for natural gas or renewable natural gas, there are about 700 stations already built out all across the country. So from a cost standpoint, renewable natural gas has a big lead. From an infrastructure standpoint, renewable natural gas also has a big lead. Then when you look at emissions, so everyone talks about grid electricity as being a zero tailpipe emission vehicle. The reality is, is that, yeah, there's nothing coming out of the tailpipe, but you actually need to look upstream and see, well, what did you use? What power plant did you use to make that electricity to charge that vehicle? And if you're a trucking company that's operating in Kentucky, guess what? 70% of the electricity you just put in your truck came from a coal-fired power plant. So we need to really look at well-to-wheel emissions. It's not just about what's coming out of the tailpipe. It's actually looking at where did your fuel come from? How did you make that electricity? How did you get it into the vehicle? And what comes out of the tailpipe? I think all of us agree, yes, there's the euphoria of let's go to hydrogen. Let's have fuel cell vehicles. Let's have the grid charge these vehicles and, and use wind and solar in order to, power the, or to provide the electricity. But where we sit today is we're far, far away from that. So from that standpoint, our company's approach is we need to embrace the transition. We need to start adopting solutions now, but take the whole picture into account, right? Don't just look at it and say, well, a BEV plug-in vehicle has zero tailpipe emissions because you need to look at where's the electricity actually come from. Don't just look at it and say hydrogen fuel cell trucks aren't going to work because there's only three stations. Maybe you could use one of those three stations in LA, and then in other parts of the country, you could use other solutions. So with all this, I mean, what we're heading into is uh, there's not going to be a one-size-fits-all solution anymore. The last however many decades have been diesel fuel, and that's been the winning solution. As we go forward, we are going to have renewable natural gas range extender electric vehicles, we're going to have BEV plug-in, and we're going to have hydrogen fuel cell. And what I would encourage all of you to do is look at, well, what actually works the best for your operations, take those three things into account, and determine what vehicle makes sense. And so that's the, the beauty of what the New York Stock Exchange is, is bringing us together to actually have these discussions, uh, as well as other fun things. Like uh, some of you may have seen, we delivered the Christmas tree on a fully electric truck. Uh, just a few months ago here in front of the New York Stock Exchange. So uh, thrilled to be back here and, uh, and be a part of this dialogue. Uh, I'll leave you with, this is going to be a transition. Uh, moving to cleaner technology is going to be tough, but you need to start adopting solutions that work for your applications in the near term. So thank you.